All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome to today's Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream. We are in the Lockheed P-38 Lightning. We are going to be departing from Pocatello and heading to Salem, Oregon. Not Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> Salem, Oregon. Um, so I'm going to see who all is coming in. Mick has uh, not going to be able to fly with us today. But we'll see who else is going to join in and we'll... we'll Get everything straightened out. Hopefully, with the quickness, and we can get in the air and get on our way. So we will wait to see who shows up. I'm gonna sip on my coffee in the meantime, so that I'm a fully caffeinated pilot. <laughs> I am your host and pilot, and Uncle B. Welcome. So yesterday, we, I was going to fly the Spitfire, but uh, since Mick was not going to be able to fly with us today, I, I brought the uh, Lightning back out. And uh, so here we are. Let's see who all jumps in and says hello and is ready to fly with us or wants to fly with us today. We got time. We can wait. It's not a big deal. Anybody's popped in on the, uh, there's Para. Okay, so Para's going to join, it looks like. We are on the uh, West USA server for anybody who might be looking for me. Um, we are, so if you, op if you go up to your name and you hit this drop-down menu, you just change that to West USA. You could do it that way, or it should automatically change when I invite you to the group. I think Pear is in the chat. He might just be getting himself sorted. And we'll go. We'll put together the flight plan. I'll show you guys how to do that, and then uh, I'll show the departure runway, the expected departure runway. It changed. <laughs> It changed this morning to something different than what I put in the uh, Discord yesterday. So it looks like our departure runway will be, and let, well, well, we'll put our VOR to VOR flight plan in. We'll make some adjustments to that. And then uh, it our runway should not change. I don't think it will. But hopefully not. Also, uh, if you're not familiar, if uh, you know you're still learning to fly, I would recommend, and I'll show you how to do this too. I would recommend switching on the unlimited fuel so you don't run out, because this plane has enough uh, range that it, it can go from for our flight. It can go from point to point and all the points in between without running out of fuel. So, uh, well, as long as I gas all the way up, I should have more than enough fuel to get there. But I'm going to have to switch my tanks because I have the fuel use on. But if, if you don't want to worry about that, put the unlimited fuel on. But I'll show everybody how to do that as well. So just waiting. I think Pear is here. He's still on the home page, but I'm, he might still be getting himself sorted. But it's okay. we got time. Be strangers come in and say hello. If you want to fly with us, you're more than welcome to. I'll be in the lightning. If you want to fly along, just to fly along, you're more than welcome to. If if you're not gonna fly a warbird like the P-38 Lightning or the Spitfire or something like that.
I'm gonna add getting ready to start here in a second. I'm good now. Um, the King Air 350i is is good enough to keep up with me. If you want, if you don't have a Warbird or you don't want to fly a Warbird, you just want to fly something different. Good morning, Fish Guns. How are you? Nice to see you here. Long time no see. <laughs> How you been? But yeah, if uh. So if, if you don't have Warbirds, and again, I don't want people spending money just to be able to fly with me. Uh, now, of course, if you're on the, spe uh, on the PC and you can find a uh, Warbird for free, by all means. But remember, free, free to play stuff is not always the most stable stuff. So, uh, you know... Don't be surprised if you have issues. So, but I, you know, if you don't want to do that, but you want to fly, I can try to find something comparable for people to fly in that that everybody should have access to. And again, if you aren't sure how to operate the plane, just you know, um, we can we can go over it. It's not a big deal. Uh, working lot. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it is. That's, and, you know, the, the crazy thing, and I, I just posted an update in, on Pilot 83's video about the A321. It's one of those things where it works at one airport, and then you go to another one, and, it, and it'll start up, but the screens will be blank. Or you go to another airport, and then you go to start up. Hello, Para. Um, just let me know when you're ready and I'll invite you. And you get this, um, what do you call it? Uh, and then you get a crash to dashboard. Or you get the, the blank screens and then the crash to dashboard. You know, there's all these different hidden. And one of the things that I thought about was there was no, if this was based on the Asobo A320 Neo, which it, it seems like it is, and it makes sense because they share a lot of the similar. No, 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 no. I'll show you. We're gonna do the. I'll do the VOR to VOR stuff here in a minute, Para. Just I just want to make sure that you're ready to go, and then we'll get started here in a minute. So the memory issue. It shouldn't be a memory issue because it's not like a complete redesign at all. It's a. If you they took the base Asobo model and then just made some minor changes so the only other thing it could be is the liveries but even the liveries don't seem like super fancy or anything like they're not all in 8k or something so i don't really know why uh it's having those issues but apparently it is i don't expect i hope it gets fixed before sim update 10 gets released here in about a month or a month and a half but i don't think that's going to happen all right so are you ready to go para let me get you invited to the group. All right, so VOR to VOR, there's different types of VORs. There's Vortex, VOR, DMEs. You don't have to know, you, if you don't want to know all of it, it's fine. I put all the information in the Discord so that if anybody wants to fly and they want to start to learn how to fly VOR to VOR. It's it's not very difficult. It's like a form of VFR flying because it's under, right under here, so VFR. So if you click on the, right below your aircraft, there should be a, a pull down menu and you select VOR to VOR. Okay, so we'll click on that now. 
We're only concerned about BOI, ILR, DSD, and EUG. Okay. Okay. You, you've got fuel use. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, Parrot. Don't worry about that. That's good. So we don't need the one right here near Pocatello Regional. That's PIH. That's the VOR DME or... I think, yeah, it's a VOR DME right next to the airport that we're departing from. So what, what I usually do, if it's right near the airport, I click on the name. It will come up with a menu, and you just want to remove it. Okay. Are, are you with me so far, Para? Just want to make sure. Anybody else, if you're not sure what I'm doing, ask now. So... Okay, removed it. Perfect. Okay, so that's our flight plan right there. 523 nautical miles, Boise, uh, and then this little airport near Burns over to uh, this airport here, Redmond. We've been there, I think, already. Over to Eugene, Oregon, and up to Salem. Okay. Our air destination airport was a former Army Air Corps airfield during World War II. It is now like a small uh, regional airport. I think it's more like a, an executive kind of kind of thing. All right, so let me clear that. All right, so I'm going to start up at a parking spot. However, our departure runway will be runway two one. So if you don't want to do the cold and dark start, and that's okay. If you just want to spawn in on runway 21, that's perfectly fine. I will meet you there, okay? Um, if you want to do your cold and dark, that's completely fine as well, as long as you know how to do it. I I don't know all of the particulars of, the, of everybody's aircraft and how you might start things on the PC side, but if you know how to do it and you want to do it that way, go for it. But if you're on the Xbox and you're having troubles, I'll try to walk you through it as best as I can. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah. My, but my advice is if you're not sure about how the whole cold and dark startup works for your particular aircraft, we will. Uh, I would just spawn in on runway 2 when your plane will be started up and you'll be ready to go. All right. I am going to go ahead and get my aircraft started up. Get it gassed up, and we will get in the air soon. Morning, Ventral Squid. How are you? Nice to see you here. I wonder if Gung Ho Guy is going to join us today. I know it's a little bit... It's even, late evening time there in Australia for him. Okay. We're going to do a couple things first. We're going to get our gas on, load it up. Get this out the way. Get all that. that oh I'm gonna go ahead and let my oh copilot is able to talk but copilot's silent right now This is one of the things that I, I forget. I 
should be on reserve. Okay, now let's try getting it started. There we go. Uh, Mick is not, uh, Mick is not going to join us today. He's got, he's been pulled into husband duties. <laughs> I forgot to crack the throttles a little bit, just to keep our, get our RPMs up. Yeah, we got all, all engines are started. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dial in my first you are three three zero. Second one is four five five. All right, so we got that all set up. Uh, uh, this cockpit view is first for me. Been looking for oh, um, yeah, it well, actually, it's not. It just looks close, but I, I don't, I'm guessing that's how it was in real life. I don't know. There's not much to this course. Yeah. There we go. There's Para down there. All right. Go ahead and get this closed. So we don't have to worry about it later on. Uh, also, I need to... Add my trim. go and I think we are all set oh I know what I wanted to do Swap a little bit of drop tank so that we start using that fuel first and then we'll change as necessary Well, it served in Europe and in uh, the Pacific. It served on both sides, but it was primarily a, I think it primarily served in the Pacific theater. Because they were manufactured in, in on the West Coast in uh, near Los Angeles. I like my engine no noise, but it's kind of loud. <laughs> well, make sure your, your canopy's closed, Para. It might be because of that. It should change if you close your canopy. Should be in the keyword. All right. Almost there. Ooh, boy, we are. This plane's itching to go.
Uh, there should be, if you look around up by the, around the top there, there should be a, a thing that you can click on and it'll close it for you and lock it. But also make sure your little side door is locked as well, if you've got that open. You just click on that and it should close and then there should be another little bar thing you click on that and it'll lock the window or lock that little door. Otherwise it's going to be pretty loud for you. The door should be closed already if you're already on the runway. It wasn't closed. Okay, so yeah, just double make sure you have all your stuff closed and then you should be all set. But I also don't, like, you know, in many cases, the whatever version you might have might be slightly different than the one that I've got, so. Even though I'm not flying it right now. I'm gonna run on your right. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna let's oop. Let's get in the air then. set up. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and get that on. Oh, let's make sure we are past our time to climb. Should. Shouldn't take very long to get past there. All right. Perfect. Now we're we are good to go. All right. On first two seven Get heading that correct direction. Pair is in the air. Trusty salute to Por Pocatello. So we're going to go up to about 19,000 feet today, Tara. That's our expected. We got. It. We're going to go once we get closer to Eugene. What's going to happen is we're going to go over some mountains, kind of low mountains, I guess. We're going to drop. Once we get over those, we're going to drop down into our uh, into our destination All right we need to go a little bit more to the left here and then we'll pick our track back up still climbing so we'll get off the throttle once we are for setting uh no it does not 
Uh, this one, it's stuck. Uh, it's automatically set to 2, 9, or 9, or 8 for some reason. Hold on a second, I can't. I gotta put this away for a second. Forget when that's open, you can't do anything else if you're zoomed in. Uh, it's stuck at 2, 9, or 9, or 8, and you can't, um, you can't change it. You can only go up, it'll never go down. I, I've not, I've tinkered with it, I could not find a way to, um, to make that work, so I don't know. But it's, but on the Spitfire, you can, it, it works. So, all right, let's keep climbing here. Let's get up to about 15. There we go. There's Para. Yeah, so I think that's something they need to fix as well. Uh, whenever they, they can. But yeah, otherwise you can't fly with live weather on because you won't be able to lower it if it's lower than 2.9 or 9 or 2. And there's no other... I looked to make sure there was no other possible ways to change it. There isn't, unfortunately. All right, we'll pick up 2.73 here. A little bit closer to our track line here. Um, for on the Xbox, I, I don't think. Well, hopefully one day. Well, now that they're well, this is a flying iron model. So on the PC side, you could probably download a mod and it would work. But on the Xbox side, we don't have that option, unfortunately. Now, yesterday evening, I was just kind of testing the flight yesterday. Now, one of the things I noticed, and I didn't look at it, I, I just happened to glance outside, and I was like, wait a minute, why is this in, in here? You can see already it's glowing, it's glowing red because it's hot. You can tell the difference in this, in the color of the engine part you have the inlet here and then the I believe that's the turbo or yeah I think it's or a supercharger it's already glowing and I didn't I didn't notice that until recently so I don't know if that's something they changed recently or what but yeah oops I thought it was painted and I was like why does it look like it's painted picture of oh because we don't have uh that's that was one of the things i wanted to test with mick and, and maybe next time if we're all flying spitfires i want to see even if you don't have the flying iron one if it shows a spitfire i'm curious to see how that might look there is in here with us flew yesterday with us did a great job flying on Landing on water the first time. All right, let's go two seven three. Still climbing to fifteen. Yeah, really enjoyed yesterday's flight. It was nice to have everybody along. Para was there, Mick was there, Gung Ho guy was there, and Patrice was there. Yeah. See, you're showing like a little. Cessna or Beechcraft kind of little plane. All right, we have 139 nautical miles to our first waypoint. What I 
think I might do because this happened last night as well. Let's go to 12 and then and we'll go the rest of the way. Use in Operation Vengeance. The oh, I did not know that. I yeah, I know I probably read that somewhere, but I just don't remember that. Thank you. A bit of history. So what I'm going to do, because uh, I I was. Yes, since I was kind of testing this plane out to make sure I knew, you know, kind of go over things to make sure everything works. The what I was always doing is I was ex, I was staying on the auxiliary tanks, which run out very quickly. So if we open up our fuel shenanigans, all right. So already we've used we're using fuel from the externals, and then once we're done with that. Then we'll go over to the, we'll go wingtips, uh, and then the mains. And then we'll keep the auxiliary just as a, as a well, the wingtips are actually good, probably going to go quick. We'll go main, and then auxiliaries, and then if we have to, we got the wingtips. But the external should take us for quite some time before it runs out. So tomorrow we have our flying uh, tour of Malta. Multiplayer will not be on. Just a reminder. Uh, no, no trains tomorrow either. I, I kind of forgot about it, and um, so we will do <coughs> um, maybe next Sunday we'll do trains. But I got to think about what we're gonna do. I wasn't really thinking about it this weekend, so we'll. Um, We'll do a train sim video next Sunday, but tomorrow's flight's just around Malta. We'll take our time and just kind of explore the scenery and everything and have some fun. I do believe there's some points of interest, but we'll just kind of take off and just kind of cruise around, enjoy the scenery, have a nice relaxing flight. Yeah, yeah. I I did read about it a long time ago. Um, I think when I was in high school for my world history class, we the we did a couple things regarding World War II and specifically the Pacific Theater. We we had to learn about the trial, everything that happened after the dropping of the two atomic bombs over Japan, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And to get a sense of what the the people who were involved in that decision, how did they come to it, and why, and, and all that sort of thing. Um, but it wasn't the the intent was not, as as my instructor said, to use twentieth twentieth century you know late twentieth century sort of thinking about what happened and apply it to what was done uh it was supposed to be a matter you know a matter of of reading there was a lot of you know you had to do some research and all that oh i did not know that interesting um but then we also i think one of the things we did talk about briefly was the uh, Yamamoto being killed and, and uh, 
but we didn't go into much detail you know uh, it was just we talked about it briefly I think and that was about it so uh, changing the subject here just a smidge just want to get to our 12,000 feet and then we'll Um, the, oh, so yesterday, uh, I think it was yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday, the beta was released for Sim Update 10. Yeah, there's lots of them out there. Uh, I think they usually have had them on the History Channel, or what, they used to have a channel called Wings, I think, now I think it's part of the Discovery Channel or something, but, yeah, there's lots of different, uh, documentaries out there certainly covering the different iterations of the Spitfire and all that. But anyway, Sim Update 10 Beta has been released. There's a lot of things coming with this Sim Update. Now, the one thing that they have not put with this Sim Update yet, now they may put it in there down the road before, before the end of the beta test, is a whole awesome thing regarding the Xbox. Now, um, I... I might jump in on that if they're asking for Xbox testers like they did with trying to understand the memory problems and why the system still seems to be crashing with some aircraft and everything. But there's a whole... Uh, no, well, I don't know what the, how much the beta was as far because I'm not part of that. Um, but it's going to be a fairly... But, well, I'm, I'm going to put a link in. This is the whole list of what they're doing for Sim, what their intent is for Sim Update 10, aside from the uh, WASM issue for the uh, WASM issue for the Xbox. A whole lot of things coming. The, finally, which surprised me, the, um, the G1000 NXI will become the de facto... G1000 for all aircraft in the sim that have that system in installed. Let's go to, try to get to 17 here. Or, well, I'll make it 18 now. There we go. Um. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. Oh. More fixes coming. The the um, pre all the premium aircraft will be unencrypted so that people can, if mods can, get in there and, and make the stock the Sobo stuff better. That's the key. Um, so yeah, a lot of changes coming. A lot of it, I think, very positive. Um, yeah, a lot of good things. Mm, excuse me, coming I think for the sim. Um, but yeah, I was really excited to hear that because there's a lot of information on the G1000 NXI that's not there on the quote-unquote base version of it. Um, you can do a lot more with it. So yeah really looking forward to that how much farther do we got to go a hundred and one it looks like almost a hundred nautical miles to go and we're just cruising along here um so yeah lots of lots of great stuff i'm really i'm hopeful cautiously hopeful that this will be the turning of the tide so to speak that this will put sim regardless if you're on pc or xbox on a better path hopefully now some people i was kind of reading a bit a lot of people have mixed feelings about it they said that it kind of reminds them quite a bit of when sim update 5 was released that a lot of people were hopeful then and then it just went 
it, it didn't work. So a lot of people are expecting uh, things to be broken upon release and that they're going to have to do a lot of patches. Hopefully that is not the case. There goes Para and Spitfire. Now, I don't para in, I, I, again, I don't know what version of the Spitfire you have. In the Flying Iron one, there is a pad, a little, like, iPad-looking thing. And it does have a autopilot system that you can use, so you don't have to fly uh, manually if you don't want to. But that's up to you. Oh, how do my flaps go? How did that happen? Oops, a daisy. I just realized I had flaps down. I don't know why that happened. I must have hit the button by accident. Oops. I wonder why I'm flying a little bit slower than normal. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Why, am I, why is this not working? Um. So yeah. Uh. There's a. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of things coming. I think that are going to be a massive improvement for the. All right, we can go all the way to nineteen thousand. There we go. Just might as well get to that last bit there. We'll level off and, uh, yeah, and now I know why. Because I'm like, I know I'm climbing, but we should get there quicker and then level off and everything should be fine. But no, now I know why. <laughs> Somehow I put down just a little bit of flap and then the plane, of course, was reacting accordingly. So. And what we can do once those uh, external tanks are all dried up, we can drop those tanks. All right, now we can now we can throttle back here a bit. There we go. See how much farther we got to go. Eighty-six nautical miles. All right, we need to go just a little. Seven point, and that we should get. We're fairly right on track. So, but yeah, there's a lot of things coming that I. I really hope that they're wrong about this feeling of of um, sim update five sort of things and, and and all that so hopefully that proves to be wrong <clears throat> and uh it's a because you know this by the end of this month it'll be the first year of sim on the on the i thought it was in no it, it is in august i think i thought it came in july i think it's august uh so hold on a second let me let me let me make sure i'm looking at the right dates because I may have misremembered it, because I know I was on vacation before it came out. Um, August 18th. Okay, so it is August. So next month will be a year. 
that we it, that it's been on the Xbox. So. Let's have a look at our fuel situation. All right, about 89 gallons left on the externals. So we'll keep an eye on that. It'll probably by the time we get to, or just past our first waypoint there, 72 nautical miles, yeah. Um, then we'll probably between halfway between BOI and ILR we may uh, we'll, we'll swap over to the other tanks and then we'll drop those in fact we can go ahead and arm them now arm arm we'll put the safety on for right now so when we'll turn the safety off we'll hit either one of these buttons and then the drop tanks will disappear and that will lighten the load so to speak We don't we're not seeing any kind of peaks poking out of the uh, clouds there in front of us I think we'll be fine at 19,000 feet I think we're taking the the best route possible although these can go up both this and the Spitfire can get up to 40,000 feet if needed but I don't think we need to go all the way up And the great thing about this type of flying is you don't you can set your own altitude. The the ATC won't tell you to go. You can if you want to fly at 19,000 feet the entire time you can. Um, but that's under IFR. You will have to, you know, it'll be a climb and maintain until you get to your cruise the set cruising altitude. Hello, Daniel. How are you? Nice to see you here. Guessing you have. Return from your fish and chips run. You're ready to indulge in your Saturday afternoon uh, fun. Paris flying with me. Mick is has been pulled into executive order husband duties. <laughs> I was going to try to uh, this button should be nice. I was going to try to invoke uh, executive order uh, brothers from across the pond and see if I could get him released from his other duties, but. I don't think that would fly with the, with his wife.
Oh, hello, Mella. Welcome. Hopefully you had a nice morning prayer. Good stuff. I think, Mick, we're going to have to talk about these executive orders. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can't get you pardoned more often than not. <laughs> yep, we're just cruising along here. We're on our way to our first waypoint. Uh, here is back there in the Spitfire. I think the uh, gung-ho guy was able to help him find a... Uh, Free, free, free to play Spitfire for the PC side. So he's he's all over the place. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> All right. Um, I did. The, oh, did a fly in the. Oh, I uh, was struggling a bit with it. Uh, oh. So. No marketplace. Uh, I'm kind of confused about that one. Uh, I did thank you, Rob. Last night before bed, did a fly in the seaplane Cessna, landed in the Atlantic Ocean south of JFK, was struggling a bit with it though because it struggles to gain speed when you go up. Yes. Yeah, because you're bouncing and so it's kind of like you feel like you gotta get up in the air a little bit quicker than, than you would normally do. And so, yeah, you get this feeling of we need to go a little bit more to the left. How much farther do we got to go? We have 31 nautical miles. Uh, and Daniel, I stocked up on ice lollies this morning. Nice. Good stuff. Watch out, Daniel. You're going to make a little upset talking about ice lollies. <laughs> uh, lovely. Look at the scenery. I don't know. These areas here look like they need to be flown through very low and very fast. Well, yeah, it is. It, it's different. You know, because when you're used to just taking off and landing on runways, even dirt or grass, 
landing on water is a, and taking off on water is a whole different experience because well landing isn't so bad because you're going to get a little bit of bump but eventually the plane settles down but the takeoff part is really i think it's more of that uh don't worry i've already been winding up <laughs> um i hear para right near me Oh, there he is. Um, yeah, so I don't know if it's just, you know, you have to adjust the throttle a little bit at a time to get it to be a little bit more smooth to build up the speed or... Because I, I, I've not really flown, you know, taken off and landed on water a lot where I feel like, like you know, we're learning how better to, to, to do all that. Now with the, uh, there is, in, in, in the game, in the sim, they did put in a thing about bush flying, and you can, it goes over, now they use a smaller, I think it's called the A5, it's a very small plane that you can take off and land on water, or can take off on land, and then land on the water, take off on the water, and then land on land, however you want to do it, <coughs> um, but it does kind of give you, uh, if you practice with that, I think that might be a good step first, just to get used to, um, you know, that sort of flying. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, all right, we got, uh, looks like 18 or 16. Seventeen. All right, seventeen nautical miles. Got to go a little bit more to the left here. Uh, see what our fuel situation is looking like. Oh, still got quite a bit in the tank there. 64 gallons. Ooh, wow, look at that. Oh, it's zipping through that valley right there. Mm -hmm. Kinds of fun stuff. Uh, well, they're both, well, it's just more of, you just gotta practice with it, and then it becomes kind of easy, although, one of the things I, I know Captain Arish has talked about, because, well, what he usually likes to do at at the end, like, he'll, when he's coming in for landing, you can guess his, uh, there's a parameter, I, I, I forget what it is, but anyway, you can guess that number, and it has to be a negative number. And so then, if you're close to it, you win, and then you can pick a landing challenge for him to do, and then as a way to wrap up the stream. And even as much as he flies, sometimes he struggles with it because uh, usually somebody will try to find a <laughs> um, a plane that he's not flown very much, you know. So it will be either an airliner or something other than the Cessna 172, just to see. And sometimes he does it and he nails it first try. And other times he's like, yeah, it was a bit more difficult than I expected. Um, so it, it depends. There's all the factors, you know, there's the wind, all that kind of stuff that you may not even kind of think about. that does affect it but the the water the problem is is that even if you're coming in for a landing and you're you 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 basically kind of kill the throttle you know bring it back to idle so that you're bleeding off speed and all that you're still going to have a little bit of a bump when you land because you know that's just how the physics i guess <laughs> science um that's how it all works i guess but um it's just, I think, is as, 
the more you practice and find a find a, a, a landing path whatever into the you know for landing you'll you'll be fine all right we are near okay so I can go ahead and swap that frequency and we're gonna turn okay we are on the right frequency and we need to turn on the heading of 255 down there he's just kind of checking things out um but I one of the things that's one of the things I want to try to do is we we try different things so that you know and, and sometimes you you know like when I I always talk about I'm I'm really thankful and and I always say this I'm glad that Captain Arish rated my channel early in the year because I was stuck in a rut flying, right? And part of it was people, I always wanted to see the A320. You need to fly the A320 seven days a week, 24 hours a day, do it or else. That's how it kind of felt to me. That's all anybody ever wanted to see was jetliner stuff. Well, there's more aircraft in the world in general than just the A320 or the 737 or whatever, right? There's more stuff to do. So when, when he raided, and so I was like, okay, I'll go back and I'll follow him. And then I was like, okay, let me check this guy out. And so I was watching his, his videos or watching his streams, and I'm like, wow, okay. This, you know, I want to do this. So then I started joining, and it was like, wow, I actually enjoy flying the Cessna 172. You know, and then there was also the the notion of the... The scenery and everything along with that, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. And so then it kind of like, man, I like flying general aviation stuff. And that's when I'm like, you know, I don't want to just fly the A320. I want to fly all these other planes as well. And if people don't like that, well, then you're missing out. It's kind of like, <laughs> remember it in, I'm going to use this analogy, New Bottle Bus and Sand Patch Grade always trashing sand patch grade oh it's a terrible or when king creek came up why did they do this oh my god it's just it's too slow blah 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 well a you don't have to buy it you you can run if you just want to run british stuff all the time you're more than welcome to right if that's all you want to do but the problem is you're missing out on different types of railroading Oh, yeah. Well, it, you can, Para. You can, you know, generally, that's why I like to find a nice little slow prop plane, uh, you know, when we're doing a scenic tour, because it's just, you know, it's a little bit slower and we can just enjoy the scenery. But if there's all these things, kind of like what Gung Ho, Gung Ho Guy was saying the other day in the chat was that there's... There's more than enough stuff in the base game for you to fly that you don't really have to buy anything else unless you want to. There's more than enough stuff for you to, to, to try. And the same thing I think was like that with uh, Train Sim World 2. There was more than enough stuff. Yeah. Well, and it just became, well, there's, hey, Mr. Addies. It became, a, a, it, it started to irritate me because that's all he would do was come in. Joe would be on Sandpatch Grade, for instance. Well, why are you doing this? Or King Creek. Why? Why? Well, because one of the things I love about Joe is that he, he wants, because he loves railroading, he doesn't want to limit himself to just the bright mainline, for instance. He wants to try all the other stuff. And that's good because otherwise you you get a narrow-minded view of of things, and that's not a healthy thing to have. It's it it it's not good. So in the same way, I'm fine, Joseph. 
Uh, in the same way with Flight Sim, if all you do is fly the A320, you're missing out on everything. But if that's what you want to do, you're more than welcome. But don't trash people who who want to fly general aviation, aside from the A320. That's why I wanted to, the theme thing kind of came up. I'm like, okay, well, and now with the multiplayer, it makes sense to tweak it again so that on Thursdays and Fridays, we can do general aviation flying. People can just come in and fly. Who was in chat? Well, uh, Mela's here. Para's here. Mick's around. I think he's lurking. Uh, Daniel's here. Ventral Squid. Um, Fish Guns was here. So, you know, if you if that's what you want to do, then fine. But there's when I discovered, I'm like, wow, there's all this other stuff that I'm missing just by flying the A320 alone. And so then it gives you an appreciation. Because a lot of people, uh, they just, they want to dive into the deep end and they want to do all the difficult stuff. I want to fly a 747 right away without really understanding how it all works. You know, and granted, there's no tutorial, like there isn't Train Sim World 2. On every route, there's a tutorial. How, this is how you start it up. This is how this operates. This is how this works. You had to run for the bus. Well, don't run. Walk for the bus, Joseph. We don't want you to trip and fall and hurt yourself. But the people who all want it, like, now they can't be bothered, right? It's like people come in and demand things, and then they disappear. They, um, you know. So... That's why on, I want it to be where if, if you want to come in and fly, fly, it's okay. If you're trying to learn something or you're like, hey, I'm stuck with this, I don't understand this, I'd be more than happy to walk you through it and try to help you figure it out. Because there, there might be something that I don't know about and we all learn together. That's the key. That's what I want out of this is not to say, oh, look at me. I'm, well, I'm not even hand flying. My hand's not even on the controller. I've just got my controller sitting on my right leg, and I'm talking to you guys while the plane is just kind of cruising along here. But, or if I was hand flying it, oh, look at me, I'm hand flying a P 38 Lightning. Is it really? Well, and that's, yeah, he, you're right, he does. And, and I think on average, he does do that. Let's see what we're, we're looking at. Our, okay, 41 gallons left. He, he does do that, I think. We got to go to the right just a smidge. Uh, wrong control. <laughs> See, I, you know, and some people like the, the bus sim stuff. Um, it doesn't interest me. I don't, I'll watch it just to kind of see, but it's like, you know, I just don't, I don't get that, like, I, I want to have this, you know, kind of thing. But some people really enjoy it. You know, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your thing, more power to you. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, but he, the good thing is, you know, kind of what Mick, does, Mick and Pulse do, the variety gaming. Even though they were known for quite some time playing FIFA, now they're not so much known for that now they're trying different things and people might say oh you know i kind of like this game i want to get this now isn't and it's not like they're paid employees or paid you know uh spokespersons or whatever it's just like hey we like this game and this is why and if you want to get it get it if not it's up to you because i think the other thing too that I, I like about what Mick and Pulse do is they they look for the free stuff as much as possible. So that way you get a a nice uh, idea, like a free game. And usually a lot of the free games are, are way better. Uh, better. And uh, much better than you expect them to be for free. So... Um, 
yeah, there's there's all kinds of things that uh, you know. That's the important part is the the um, you know the variety. Uh, but some people they only focus on one game. That's their bread and butter, so to speak. And there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you have enough things that you can do. You know, like trying different planes, then yes, you can. There's more that you can enjoy flying wise. 71 nautical miles. Well, I do too, but the, the thing is, the games that you expect are going to be chill, right? Sometimes are the most frustrating games, it turns out to be. Like, and part of it is, is you know, like, We'll use the, the the Lego DC thing that Pulse and Mick were playing. It's it's a it was a fun looking game and all that, but then the frustrating part is the puzzles don't make sense. How do you solve the puzzle? There's no and and a lot of times there's no clues. You have to like look around. When I played Batman Arkham City, I think it was. Um, there were, you know, you when you were trying to solve certain puzzles to unlock certain things, there was no clues, and it was like, okay, how do I do this? And you're looking around, you're like, okay, let me try this. And then finally, when you're stumped, you're like, okay, let me look up it online. And then all of a sudden, you're like, okay, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, it's just uh, one of those things. Well, and see, the problem is that. I think, and I, I know for me, I do this. The, you, what do you call it? You you get, um, you're just having a bad day. And then something happens in the game that just, that's it. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back. Bam, you are just like, Argh! and it, and, and what I see too is, kind of like the, the game that Mick and Paulson and, uh, um, Predator were playing that this exploring and all that it starts off very simple right you're like oh it's exploring and you, you gather this stuff and you can build more stuff and that's not that bad and then all of a sudden you start to run into areas that you shouldn't have been going into and you're like oh well and now then it becomes you get angry and because the game isn't making any sense it's not like in like in the division or the division two you have areas and it's like don't go here until you are at this level otherwise you're just going to get creamed now if you think you can take the chance go for it but be be aware that you're not going to survive but otherwise go for it it's up to you but that's the thing is there was no like when i was you know watching and listening to mick the other day there was no warning ahead of time that he was going into an area where very likely he was going to get his ass handed to him. <laughs> now, that's, you know, if you think about it, and you know, when explorers from a long, long time ago, that's what happened. They would go to an area thinking, oh, we are the most powerful, and then they would go in and they get their asses handed to him. So, but that's where the frustration comes from. Because it's like you're trying to improve your character. You're trying to gather things to keep building. And then you just happen to go into one area and you get obliterated. I had a roommate when I was in Arizona for a year who played civil. I think it was one of the Civilization games. And I can't remember what version it was. I just know it was uh, Civilization... Uh, uh, no, no, I haven't done the uh, World of Warships. Um, I've seen it. It looks interesting, but I, I'm a bit uh, leery of it. It just, it seemed like it was one of those they want you to to pay to unlock the more powerful warships. But anyway, so he would he would get he would get his civilization started. Now, this was on PC, not a console, mind you. This was on a PC. 
So he'd have his area all set up and everything's going well. And then out of nowhere, out of the blue, no warning whatsoever, either Mother Nature would wipe him out or he would be attacked by a more dominant force and his, his civilization was wiped out. The first time it happened, he was like, okay. But by the fourth or fifth time, he was pissed. Like, violently pissed. Like, I thought he was going to pick up his PC and frick and break it. He was so upset. I was like, wow. And, and you think, okay, civilization should be a nice, calming game. And, and you, you know, you build up and you explore and you expand and... You keep improving and, you know, kind of like any sim game, you know, like The Sims, you know, Sim City, uh, all that kind of stuff. It, it, it's all, you know, you're like, oh, I just want to build up and, and it'll be great. Nope. <laughs> the Sim has different plans than you do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it doesn't always work that way. But he was so, oh my god, I thought for sure, like I said, I thought he was going to pick up that tower and just smash it on the ground, smash the freaking monitor, and that would have been it. I was like, wow, I'm glad. Like, there was times, he got so violently upset, I did not, we, you know, we were roommates, and, you know, eventually I got my own room, but it was like, he, it worried me. Like, I, I, not for myself necessarily, but I was, wor like, if he was up on the computer, I was, I was just like, I can't sleep because I don't know when he, that, that Sim is going to blow his mind so much that he is going to get, you know, start throwing things or whatever. But where's the enjoyment in that? Right? There's no, there's none. There's no real enjoyment in any of that. Right? None. But people do it because they're like, oh, I used to play Civilization games, or I used to play this kind of game. Let me get this one now. And then it's just a complete shit show, for lack of a better term. Sorry. And you're just like, but wait, how, why, what? And that's what it is. It's It turns into a complete shit show, and you don't know why it's happening now. Because you're like, but I, I've done this before, and it was fine. <laughs> You know, why is it, why is it not working now? No rhyme or reason at all. But that's how it is, unfortunately. But there, where's the enjoyment in that? I, I don't, there isn't any, right? In all, at the end of the day, there's no enjoyment in any of that. And that's after you know, like after a while, some games I'm just like, nope, I'll never go near them again because I turn into a person that I do not like very much, and I'm just like, nope, I will not do it. Nope. I used to play FIFA, but that was before there was multiplayer. There was when I played FIFA years ago. There was no multiplayer aspect to it, and it was fine. Mult, I think, quite honestly, and I'm not trying to be. Not trying to disrespect anybody or their feelings. Multiplayer has done more to ruin the gaming industry than anything else, I think. It's fine, but when you it's it can becomes competitive in nature, like you know, Battlefield and Call of Duty stuff and all that. It uh uh no, not not many people do now because it, it, it had its time and now most people can't be bothered with it they're just like no because it's a patience thing nobody has the patience to build start from scratch right and build things up and then hopefully that you are so well prepared that you can repel any invasion or you can weather the storm whatever but the game is always going to have its own agenda um, but anyway, um, but yeah, I think, unfortunately, the multiplayer has done more because the, 
the people who play these games competitively, right? The esports, for instance, with FIFA and all that, they don't care, right? Because they, a they have a full squad. They're, they they get a group of people together and they play. They all know each other, and it doesn't matter where in the world they are. They all they they all work together. The average player does not have the time or the resources to invest like an esports player does, because they're paid. They're paid to do all this. They have sponsorships and everything else, right? Um, so they don't, you know, they don't have to. They don't want for much of anything. They don't have to worry about paying the bills and stuff like that. Really, they're taken care of. But the average player does not have that that sort of, you know, putting together a team and working on the communication and all that kind of stuff. And even when, just kind of like with the uh, uh, the when Mick and Pulse do on Mondays, right? And they get people in to play FIFA with them. Sometimes you get really awesome players who come in. They know what they're doing. They don't need a lot of help or you know pointers or whatever, and they play well. Other times they say they're going to play well, and they come in and they're just complete crap. Who? Well, see that's the other thing, Joseph. If you're going to stream, you don't. You, all you need, like, what Mick and I and and. Um, Pithers do, for instance, we're on a separate chat. Mick can hear us. We can talk to Mick directly, like if we're like, hey, we're done with this, what's the next thing or whatever. We don't have to you guys can't hear us. So if we're if we're acting silly in the chat with Mick, right, you don't got you guys don't hear that. You you might hear Mick laughing and go like, okay, something funny must have happened in the other chat. But yeah, if if you don't know the people, Joseph. You don't have to have them in your voice chat. Why would you why would you let them in if if you don't know them and you can't trust them because they're a bunch of knucklehead kids? Well, what do you expect's going to happen? They're going to act like knucklehead kids. They're going to act up in your stream and then you're going to get pissed off and that's going to be that. But <clears throat> um But yeah, with the FIFA, there's those players who play well and the other people come in and they're like, "Oh, I'm rated blah 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 blah." Well, but you're not playing like it, right? That's the honest truth. They come in, they're just there because, oh, I get to be on somebody's stream. Look at me. Oh, I'm famous. No, you're not. You're just being a, a jerk in somebody else's stream. But I think, you know, there's, I had this discussion, you know, when Division 2, when, as they started adding more stuff and it became more difficult, I said, well, then maybe that person is not really your friend, Joseph. I don't know what to tell you. You 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 keep strange company sometimes to be honest. <laughs> you 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 but anyway. Oh, I got to check. Oh, I got to do one other thing before I forget. 11760. Let me get this set for the next cuz we're almost at our second waypoint there. Seven six zero. See, I got so uh, started talking so much, I almost forgot what to do. Right, we need to turn a little bit to the right. So yeah, if that's if that's you, who considers themselves, the day's gone. No, I'm not. I'm not. See. Everybody suggests things. I'm not usually I, I very leery about stuff because everybody. But I'll tell you another story here in a minute once we're on our way to our next waypoint here. Now I think I need to switch fuel tanks here shortly. Let me just see how far, much more gas is in the. Okay, we need to switch now.
All right, there we go. They're gone. Ta-da. Um, oops, I gotta change. I gotta go heading uh two seven four. Hold on, we'll get back to this. And then we need to dial in one one two nine zero. Okay, so this is what happens, right? And this is what happened in Destiny 2. I had a group of people I played the original Destiny with, right? And so one of, one of the guys I played with was like, hey, are you getting Destiny 2? And I said, well, I, I'm not, not sure. I said, I'm, you know, I'm not convinced that Bungie had learned and Activision had learned their lessons from all the stupid crap from, from Destiny 1. But they, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe they have, but I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. And he said, well, if, if you get it, can you game share with me? I'm like, okay, well, I think that's reasonable. But this is what happened. I spent on the high-end edition, because I wanted all the, the bells and whistles, so to speak. Right? I spent, I bought the high-end edition, which was like $120 or something like that digital even um hold on a second this guy never he would never show up right so like we were going to play together never shows up for quite some time and I'm like you know I feel like I got ripped off you know, I bought the game, game share, and then it was just like, phew, he disappeared. And I'm like, so then finally he's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, dude, where have you been? What do you mean? I said, <clears throat> I bought the game, game share it with you, and then you're never around. What's up with that? You know, so I am very, and I'm not trying to be ungrateful or anything, Joseph. I, I don't like, I don't need, you know, like, it takes something, you know, like the FS22. I was like, you know, it looks interesting. I watched it for a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? This is going to be good. Is it perfect? No. There's still, still issues that need to be ironed out, just like a lot of these games. But um, I I like it because when I go on the farm with Mick, for instance, I just go in there, I get stuff done, and then it's I, I treat it almost, well, kind of almost like a job, but I'm not getting paid, but I'm also getting to chat with Mick and Pithers and Chris at the same time, and we have a laugh, and we, we tease Mick, because he'll, he'll be telling you guys, you know, I'm not talking to myself, there's other people on another chat, that are, and we always say, no, there's not, no, there's not, <laughs> he's talking to himself, don't buy it, don't buy into it, he's, he's crazy, <laughs> you know? But I, I do enjoy it because it's, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. But do I, am I a serious farmer? No. But I enjoy going in and helping Mick out. That's my, my whole thing. You know, that's all I want to do. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, have all this, you know. So, um. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, those things I don't particularly care for. So there's good parts about, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, multiplayer stuff, like, you know, farm sim. You know, it's not, but it's, when it becomes competitive, I think, that's when things get really bad for, for, for a game. Because in, you know, like I remember in the first division, there was all this this talk about people were were uh, finding ways to um, some kind of a glitch. I can't remember what it was called. Anyway, they basically it was like they fooled the system somehow, um, and they were they you couldn't kill them, but they could kill you. 
I can't remember what it was term what the term was for it. But there was so much of that that it became you know even if so if somebody was really skilled at what they were doing, right? The automatic assumption was everybody was cheating. If you got your butt handed to you and you could not do anything to stop it, the other person must be cheating. It became that became the the, the standard, right? Yeah. Well, it was kind of like a god mode, but they were uh, they were they built something to to fool. Can't there was a term for it? I can't remember the name of it. But that that became the new thing, right? Everybody was automatically, if you were that good, it didn't matter. You must be cheating somehow. Not that you spent time and you worked and, and got your character up and all that. It was, you, you're a cheater. I know you're a cheater, and you're forever in my mind going to be a cheater. Part of that was because when it was discover, um, discovered that people were cheating... Ubisoft was kind of like, no, 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 that's not possible. It took them, I think, at least six months, if not more, to finally admit that they were that there was cheating. That people, you could, there was ways to cheat even outside the player versus player stuff. You could cheat in the in the in the in the regular game world. There was ways to glitch through things, through walls. And, and, and be able to complete things without actually going through the whole process. And so once Ubisoft start, suddenly said, okay, if we catch you doing this now, you're going to be banned. We're going to ban your account. Now, that doesn't really stop people because they're like, well, I'll just create another account. <laughs> you know, just like when they're banned from cheating in PvP modes, they're like, uh, oh, well, I'll just... I'll wait a couple days and I'll create another account and you can't stop me. And I'll go right back to doing what I was doing. Because they want to be able to circumvent the system. They, they, they enjoy that challenge of, okay, I see what you're doing here. I'm going to find a way around it. Uh, I used to play Forza Motorsports. Uh, I played both Destiny 1 and 2. I played Division 1 and 2. Um... I played farm. I played farm sim. Uh, yeah, there's not much. I mean, one well, I played Train Sim World too. But the yeah, there was a lot more games. What I discovered was that with these these publishing companies now it's it's all a uh, well yeah I know but I I just name in the games so I, I you know there wasn't much that I did outside of a sim you know. For a while, it was just the, the looter-shooter sort of stuff, like both Destiny games and both Division games. Um, I tried um, Warframe. That was too irritating because I was like, I, I couldn't figure it out. And even though I would join a guild or whatever you want to call it, no, I couldn't get answers from anybody like, hey, I'm trying to get this. How do I do this? Can somebody help me? Even though they always say, oh, this is like a really great community. Well, that's that, that's very suspect, you know. Uh, I'm not sure that I found a great community in Warframe. Yeah, I tried that because I was like, well, you know, because everyone's like, well, it's free. You don't have to buy anything. If you, wanna, if you want to pay for stuff, you can. If not, it's fine. But there was that, it was a massive grind. It, but a lot of it didn't make sense. Like, okay, I'm, I want this particular frame, and how do I get it? Okay, I'd look it up, and I'm like, okay, can somebody help me? I need to get, do these things done in order to get this piece that I'm looking for. Um, <clears throat> everybody now, I think, too, the, the main focus is speedruns. I, I saw it a lot in the first Division game and the second we got to get in here and get this done as quickly as possible. Okay, but I, I want to stop and get the... No, we're not stopping for anything along the way. We're, we're doing this as quickly as possible. Well, what's the fun in that? We're not... Don't... Doesn't matter. That's what we want to do. 
yeah, speed runs. That's it's just, it was all about how fast could you get main missions done. You want to get as many of them done as quickly as possible. Raid, same thing. Okay, how many times have you been in the raid? Five. Okay, so you should know what you're doing. Yes, but I haven't gone in a while. It doesn't matter. Either you know it or you don't. <laughs> you know, or you... Well, there's collectibles in every area. You have stuff to pick up along the way, right? <clears throat> and so they... They don't, but they don't want to do that. They're like, no, we're in here. We're going to get this done. End of story. If you're not, if you're going to lollygag or whatever, we're going to kick you. We don't want you here. Um, yeah, it's, it, 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 it was, it wasn't fun after a while. You know, it's like, but I, you know, why can't we just go in there and have fun? No. We're here to get a speed run done. I've only got this much amount of time, and the <clears throat> significant other will be home soon, and I need to get this done. If we're going to do it, we're, let's do it. If not, then go. We'll find somebody else who will. <laughs> Every it's it's not a, when when in the first division game after a lot of people just drop. You know, they're like, okay, there's nothing more to do. I would run up and down the streets just killing bad guys I'd start off in one area and just go from one end to the other back and forth back and forth finding all kinds of stuff so then when everybody came back they're like I gotta go find this I'm like I already know where it is let's go I just spent I just run in every area I just run up and down the streets <clears throat> finding every nook and cranny and it was okay I enjoyed it because it was just like, okay, I'm not in any rush. I can just find stuff. And But yeah, ugh. everything, it's its how fast it can get done. Um, some people do stuff fast and they find uh, ways to go around something or glitch something or whatever. Um, um, yeah. It, that's that's what people try to do. But that part of that's on the publisher. They they put out a broken product and people people use a, you know, they'll they'll use that to their advantage. You know. I, I enjoy it more. Now, there's times where it's like, okay, we if there's a timer, that's a different story. But if you're putting a timer on me and saying, I have, you want to get this done within this amount of time or else, you know, I only have an hour to play. Well, but normally these things take an hour or more than an hour to do. Well, it, if you know what you're doing, it shouldn't take that long. <laughs> well... Not sometimes you're having a bad day and you're just like I, I'm struggling. I can't, you know, something's not working or the game's broken. For you know, it's glitching on its own. Not that we're introducing a glitch. There's times where the game does not do it, things appropriately. I've gotten into arguments with people about that. No, no, you're you're full of it. You're you're just making excuses for your crappy play. And I'm like, no, I'm telling you, I was shooting at this. Thing and it was not working. No, 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 no. You're just, you're lying. <laughs> okay, well, fine then. I'm out of here. Yeah, I, it's, uh, that's what I mean when, when I say that multiplayer has done a lot to ruin things because people come in with this sort of crazy notion right and so they 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 figure so I don't think we needed to be up at 19,000 we're on our way to no wait we're not there yet never mind we got one more waypoint after this one I almost thought we were coming towards the end here um yeah I just it but yeah, it's either people are cheating or you have people who are just like, uh, 
are just unpleasant people to play with. And it, 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 it invariably happens. Every time I've been in some kind of a clan or guild or group or whatever, it all starts off fine and then it just it falls apart. Somebody, somebody gets jealous, somebody starts talking crap, and then it's just like, okay, this is no longer fun. Yeah. I, now, like, this is fine for me. This is the kind of multiplayer I like. If people want to come in and join and fly, it's perfectly fine. If you just want to come in and you just want to watch, that's fine, too. You know, I want people to feel good about the flying, and if that's what they want to learn how to do, that's perfectly fine with me. see now it just okay somehow the gas it how did the left tip go empty that doesn't make any sense all right now now well all right hold on we don't have to have these on all right that's fine we got more than enough gas but it's interesting um well, <clears throat> well, there. But see, the thing is, Joseph, right? You had people in on a multiplayer on your GTA or whatever, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably so. I'm like, wait a minute, why did the, suddenly the left tip, wing tip fuel tank go empty? That's kind of weird. Well, we're on the main tanks, it's fine. We got more than enough gas to get there. It just seems weird that why would that one go empty? What, uh, well, let's all right, let's look at this now. Because I I dropped the tanks. Let's see. I think that's what it is. Dropping that those tanks ha somehow has an impact on the left tip of for fuel. Very strange. Yeah. Something. But, yeah, we're fine. We'll, we got more than enough gas to get there. But I think that's what it is. Dropping these external pods seems to have an impact on this tank right here. The problem with that is now the plane becomes unbalanced. Because you have less fuel in the left tip than you do on the right tip. That's very strange. Oh well. It's a good thing I looked because otherwise we would have, if it came down to the wingtip tanks, left one would have been empty. We would have, though only the right engine would have worked. <laughs> the left engine would have had no gas. <laughs> Terrific. Alright, how much more do we got to go to? 14. Okay. So after this one, we only have 83 nautical miles to our fourth waypoint. Yeah. Fourth. And then we're going to turn towards our airport. Um, so I think we're going to be fine. Once we're over. Let's see. What, as soon as I can feel like we're over the over the hill, then I'm going to start descending. We'll start dropping altitude because I think there, this is the area we got to get over right here in front of us. Coming up somewhere in there, because that looks high enough that we're we're heading in kind of over snow capped. Oh, there's somebody in an A320. Let's see if we have anybody else with us. It seems to be the only one in the area. Oh, there's an airport there. I think that's Redmond. Um. 
Okay, so <clears throat> coming up soon, Para, once we're over, so we, first off, we got to cross our waypoint coming up here in very soon. Okay, and then we're going to turn a little bit to the, to the left, and we're going to, uh, Mick's not flying today, Joseph. Mick is, has other obligations today. He could not fly with us. So Mick is not flying anything. He's flying a, a, a deck chair or something, I'm guessing, right now. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so hold on, let me make sure. Uh, once we get the thing saying that uh, we are on our, on our way to Eugene. Let's go a little bit more to the left. Just a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and swap that. And then we're gonna go uh, two, four, seven. Mick can, uh, yeah, one more checkpoint. And that's at Eugene, Oregon. That's where we're heading to right now. Is Eugene. So <clears throat> once we're, so we we need to get over this area here. We got to make sure we're clear of anything high. So that we're going to stay right here where we're at at nineteen thousand feet. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and drop down in altitude. Yeah, that was ready. That was the point we just passed. So no below us there. Um, so we're going to drop, start dropping in altitude in preparation for our landing there at uh, uh, in Salem, Oregon, the McNary field. So, so we'll make sure we're clear of this. Uh, we, we, it's not a very far, this, this part is not very long. I think once we're clear of these snow-capped mountains, then we can start dropping altitude. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Joseph. I, I love them, too. Let's uh, try to fly them whenever we can. We only have the two. Well, no, actually, the, we have three, because I think the, the Grumman G-44 was a World War II plane. The... The uh, Goose was a World War II plane, I believe. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think we're okay with, with the way things are right now. Okay, so it, it's it's stopped. It hasn't used any it, that fuel stuff. It's stopped out of the left tip, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we've got more than enough to get us there, so I think we're going to be fine. Um, so yeah, we'll start dropping altitude in preparation for landing. We're gonna have to start, you know, making sure we don't go too fast, and then um, then we'll be all set. But yeah, I think this is the part we got to get over, and then we'll be fine from there. Yeah, it looks like it's just. We can, once we're clear there, we'll start dropping down just to be on the safe side. Yeah, safety first. Exactly. Well, because I've done it before where I start descending and then all of a sudden it's like there's something else that I didn't think about. And then it's like, oh, I got to climb back up again. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. So, um,. So yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll be on the ground pretty soon before we know it. And then I will get this loaded up for tomorrow. YouTube. Yep, tomorrow Malta. I don't know what I'm going to be flying in. Well, it's it's we're in Oregon, but it looks a lot like. 
Well, Joseph, you don't want to do that. All right, here's the thing. I'm going to give you a little bit of medical advice. You take a washcloth, dip it in cold water for a bit, and then squeeze it out. And then put that on the back of your neck, okay? You don't want to pour the cold water because you could shock your system. But a cold washcloth on the back of your neck should do the trick. If you do anything else, you could shock your system, and, and you don't want to do that. It's like jumping into a cold swimming pool on a hot day. It may feel good, it may sound good, but if you you could inadvertently cause your system to go into shock. Oh, I always think of Oreo with Oregon. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and we can start dropping them. Let's get down to about 17,000. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things. That it's just a simple thing to do. You know, if you're overheated, you always put a... Uh, yeah. Um, you just put a cold washcloth, not like ice cold, just, you know, nice cool water, and put that on the back of your neck and you'll feel a lot better. Just drink water. Don't like guzzle it. Just keep drinking water. Eat throughout the day so you stay hydrated. You'll be fine. Don't try to steer clear of the junk food. If you eat that and it's hot out, you're just gonna get all like ugh. It's not gonna be you're not gonna feel very good. And don't drink alcohol either. You're clear of that. That'll help. That will dehydrate you very quickly. Well, that doesn't help you, Joseph. If you if you don't eat, you need to eat something because you need that. <laughs> I'm going to give you a bit of science. You have to eat because if you have, um, if you you need the healthy amount of sodium in order for you to stay hydrated. Doesn't mean you have to like just pour a ton of salt on there. Well, every food has a natural amount of sodium. You need that in order to stay hydrated because the water has to have something to stick to. Okay. So even, let's say you pass out. Even if you go to the hospital and they put a bag of fluids in you, if you haven't eaten, you're going to suck down that bag of fluids and it's not going to do anything for you. I've seen it happen. I've seen people come in, oh, I'm dehydrated. Okay. When's the last time you ate? Oh, a day and a half ago. What did you eat? Oh no, I ate something this morning. What did you have? I had a Pop-Tart. Get, get the F out of here. A Pop-Tart in 110 degree weather. Are you serious? You think that's going to help you survive in that kind of heat? <laughs> no. No. I know I know people think I'm I'm nuts or dumb or whatever but i'm telling you from experience you need to eat maybe hot if you have sandwiches something that has a natural amount of sodium you don't have to have hot food so you're already going to feel hot as it is make sandwiches a salad whatever sub tough uh well it it should have this sort of right here it, it's this symbol right here. It says ATC, and you can click on that, and it'll come up with a window. 
That's what you're looking for, I think. Yeah. How much more do we got to go? 40 something nautical miles, okay. Now, yeah. uh, a Rutar and a Sig Sailor's Brunch, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, see, like fish and chips, although, I mean, it's. Depending on how they make it, it's 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 good, but it's you know that's got sodium in it because you got the batter, you got the chips. But yeah, if you eat healthy, like a salad, something that is you know it doesn't whatever you can eat that's cool but not that that helps you re stay hydrated. That's what you want to do. Not candy bars, not junk food, nothing super greasy. And you'll be fine. Try to eat some fruits. You know, but yeah, steer clear of the junk food. Don't go to McDonald's or whatever. If you go to McDonald's, order a salad. Don't order a Big Mac or whatever. It may taste good, but you're going to feel lazy later on because it's just, it's garbage. Uh, yeah, if you eat, if you get those, like the mixed nut, the can of mixed nuts, that's good for you. Yeah, absolutely. That's got sodium in it. And now, ice cream. More now, Big Macs, please. We're proud dollar menu shop. <laughs> well, I mean, see, that's, that's the thing about junk, you know, fast food. It fills you up, kind of, right? You like the taste of it. But at the end of the day, you you invariably you will feel like junk because that's what it is. It's you're putting junk in your body. Now I, I know I'm I'm I do it myself, but I don't I try and I cut way back on it. It's like once in a blue moon will I have it because if I eat it all the time, I know I'm gonna feel like yuck. And and then it's just it's not good. Yeah, <clears throat> that's but that's how they that's how they get people hooked. They're like, oh, I only have so much time for lunch. Okay, I'll go run over here and get this, and then come back to my office. A, you're not eating away from your desk; you're eating at your desk, and it's junk food. How is that going to help you? No, it's not. You're going to feel fine for a while, and then all of a sudden, about an hour and a half, two hours later, you're going to be like, ugh. That's what it is. That's all it is. I, I said it before, and I'll say it again. When I talked to those two mountain rescue paramedics, one guy said it, and it's always stuck with me. If you eat like garbage, you're going to feel like garbage. <laughs> yeah, I do miss now the chow hall. The, the, you know, you go in there and you get your food. Now, when you're back in the garrison it's not a lot of food but when you're out in the field you get more food because you're burning more calories but yeah if if most people feel like garbage because they eat garbage not like in the literal sense but in the figurative sense you know if you eat junk food all the time you're going to feel like junk you're going to be lazy you're not going to have much energy 
And you're just going to be like, oh, I just want to lay on the couch and do nothing. Okay. <laughs> that might feel good for a little while, but... It's not... Um, Yeah, that's he said that, and I, because I, I think I've told this story before. We were all sitting around their little camp base, and a guy came up talking about knee pain, wanting some Motrin for it. And the one of the guys I can't remember his name. There was two guys. One was like a tall. One of them was kind of tall, about six two or something. He said, "Well, I'll get your." Uh, all three chow halls open at midnight. Yeah. Nice. Um, he said, well, I'll get you the Motrin, but and he, he said, if he said, I'm gonna give you a recommendation. He said, when you get back home, you need to go to the store and you need to get some kale leaves. And he said, you steam the kale leaves, with a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, because he said the kale leaves alone, are, they don't have much taste. They're kind of bitter. But if you get the get those leaves, put a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, and eat those, the vitamins in kale leaves will help you with your knee pain. It's all natural. You don't have to take all that medicine. A lot of times we take medicine, and it's not good for us. It may help us feel okay for the time being but it's probably doing more damage and you know like all the people who take Motrin all the time it messes I think it's their liver that gets messed up eventually it's either liver or kidney one of the two I can't remember which one but it does damage to your body it may help with the pain but it will it will do other damage to other parts of your body in the long term but kale it's a natural thing He said, if people did that, instead of always reaching for the medicine bottle, medicine is, you know, if you think about it, there's a lot of medicine that's provided for us in nature. It's just that we got used to reaching for the medicine bottle. And that's not good. Now, I, remember, I, I remember Midnight Chow when I was deployed. You know, like when I was on 24-hour evac duty, we had to take a patient to uh, Baghdad. If they, we, if they couldn't fly for some reason, if the medevac chopper couldn't arrive, we'd have to take them there ourselves to, to the next level of care. We'd have to drive them there. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But, yeah, we had midnight chow. And it was usually something like uh, it was um, like sandwiches, you know, like pre-made sandwiches, cold, or, or you could go in and make your own sandwich. They would have like little things of cereal. Um, what else was there? Let me get down a little bit. Let's get down to about seven. Oh, I need to look at what our airport altitude is. So I know roughly how far down to go and not crash approach. I need a churn as well. Oops, I yep. Start turning on a heading of three five six. I'm, I honestly miss uh, the breakfast when, in, in Iraq. That was the best.
All right. Um, so, 20... At least 2,400 is our target. Uh, pool is up, now filling up. Nice. <laughs> Stuff. All right, uh, let's get down a little bit lower. So we only have a 48 nautical mile run to our destination. All right, so we are all set there. Anything on shore beats the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Joseph's saying he wants to come over to the house now, Nick. And hop in your pool. And, and drink your alcohol. And eat all your food. <laughs> and then fall asleep. Let's see if Eugene or if uh, our airport is on the list now. KSLE is. I thought I just saw. Nope. A lot of small fields around here. I could do a stream from the pool in my boots. <laughs> as long as we don't see that visual, Mick. I don't think anybody wants to see that. I could be wrong though. Somebody might want to see that. Just be fluent in Metar, but haven't used it in a while. But this game makes me want to refresh. I've never, I've never really got, you know, uh, a, a classmate of mine from high school. She was in the Air Force and was a, a meteorologist uh, for the Air Force. We had him in the army, but I think it was like you couldn't, you didn't do it in. in uh, so what it? it was like they already had like their favorites, so to speak. And so even if you were out of school and you had all the latest knowledge, it's like they always put you in on other duties for some reason. I saw we had air traffic controllers in, in the army also, and they they would not always do air traffic control jobs. They would always get put in like an admin stuff or whatever. It's like that's not what I signed up for. I signed up to be a air traffic control person. No, nope, I need you over here instead. Anyways, well, thank you all for coming in and hanging out. Hopefully you've enjoyed the flight. Thank you, Para, for joining in. Nice to have you along. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Okay, 3,500 is a good, good place to live. And... Let's see here. Let's see if it's on the. Nope, it is not yet there. We are. We're not letting it in Eugene approach. I'm guessing this is not a towered. Where we're heading is not a towered field. All right, 27 nautical miles. sightseeing. A uh, number code code is the same for all nations and it reads like a ticker tape of numbers which coincide with weather, events, pressure, speed. 
It's been fantastic. I'm glad to hear that, Joseph. You're fantastic, too. How about that? Still not there. Ooh, we got a strip called Coca-Cola. Jim's Airstrip. I don't know that I want to know what Jim's doing at his Airstrip. <laughs> We're looking for K-S-L-E. Municipal. Interesting. A lot of small fields around here. I noticed. Dunning Vineyards. Interesting. Tall man. Where's short man at? <laughs> if there's a tall man airport, where's the short man airport? <laughs> it made your what? It made your... I don't know. It made your bed? It made your dinner? It made your... I don't know. Clarifying that. Be on the other list. I bet you if I go to the next page, it'll be there. our airports. I think we've got to be almost right on top of it before we're done. We should be seeing it by now on the list. I kind of feel like we're going to be, have to be... Um, yeah. You're welcome, Ventral Squid. Glad to hear it. I know, I used to hate working Saturdays. Ugh. And I'd always get stuck on duty on a weekend, so your weekend's ruined. You, you, know, you, go, to, you go on duty Saturday, you get off duty on Sunday, you still got to go back to work on Monday. <laughs> well, unless you had a good leader who would say, well, you know, go ahead and take Monday off. Well, we got things coming. That was very few and far between. Because it was like they wanted everybody there on Monday. It didn't matter. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, still, that's like four hours too long. <laughs> A dice. Wow, okay, that's a new one. I think we get down to 3,000 feet here. We are. We are farmers bumping up. Bump, bump. Not say more than that. Where is our airfield? What is it? See, that's the bad part when there's all these small strips nearby. Look at look at this. It's just nothing but small airfields for, for farmers and whatnot. I'm looking for one particular airport and I cannot find it. It's not on the list. Even though by now it should be we are like six nautical miles. And you're telling me all these little dirt strips. There it is finally. Alright. We're gonna do it. We're gonna fly over, her, obviously, because there's no way we're gonna dump speed and all that. And we're gonna, it should be like. Oops. Actually, it might be it right there in front of. Yep, it's just right there. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna fly over the edge there, and then we're gonna turn. And I think Para is already on the ground. Nice. I'll meet you on the ground there in just a minute, Para. auxiliary tanks and then we should be fine. So I'm going to turn the laptop to the right just a moment. I will check the chat here once we're on the ground. How did you like that uh, Spitfire? Was it pretty good for you? Or was it a bit of a handful? Thank <laughs> you. 
big pair is on the runway. Pair, you might want to go over to the parking spot. I'll catch up with you over there. It's fine. So I kind of feel like you're... Oh, no, wait, never mind. I see... Never mind. Never mind. You're already off the runway. I just saw the... It seemed... It almost seemed like you were sitting on the runway still, but that was not correct. Sorry about that. We don't want to stall here before we get on the runway, which is what we're in danger of doing here. Boy, this wind has got me all over the place today. I knew that was going to happen. Ooh. A little bit of a bumpy landing. But we made it. On behalf of myself and the entire flight crew, we'd like to welcome you to Salem, Oregon. Local time is 6.35 in the morning. We know and understand and appreciate the fact that you'd rather be in mixed pool right now with him. But you chose to fly with us instead. So we greatly appreciate that. Do join us tomorrow for our flight around Malta. Seven, well, yeah, seven ten. We'll get started, and then we'll go flying and have a nice flight. No multiplayer tomorrow. No multiplayer. Just remember that. Back over that way. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. All right. Uh, cheers. Um, yeah, so, uh, cheers, Ventral Squid. Nice to have you along. Thanks for coming by. I'm flying, or I'm taxing over to this way. Uh, or if you if you're still started up, you want to join me over on the fuel pad. And I didn't swear once the stream. <laughs> Mick, come on now. Drop some F bombs. It's okay. You'll feel a lot better. <laughs> well, glad I was able to help out. Now we need to talk to the wife about a executive order brothers from across the pond. We'll see if we can't get you uh, exempt from. from uh, duties on Saturdays. Oh, okay, that's fine. Well, you know what? Let's let's just go back and we're screw it. We're not. I'm sure there's a parking spot here we can go into. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Carol. Good stuff. You landed. Looks like you made it, so that's a good thing. Yeah, there's Parker right next to Parra. We'll just go over. Boy, this thing's got... It's like all over the place. Yeah, we'll 
I'll, I'll go right next to the barrel there. Hmm. That's interesting. There we go. Let's go ahead and shut it down. An hour 59. Not too bad. We made it. We made it. Para made it. That's the important part. Para landed and did not uh, crash. So that's a good thing. Let the uh, stream catch up here. Yeah, it was weird. It was almost like it, yeah, I could see it now. Yeah, where you feel like the plane kind of did its own thing. <laughs> Crazy. Um, what's, uh, yeah. Glad Para made it. Yeah, that's two flights in a row. He's done very well. It's a good start. So hopefully, uh, but I practiced. Oh, okay. Well, good. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's the important part. Just practice, and pretty soon you'll be good with it. Um, yeah. Anyway, that should do it for today, folks. I greatly appreciate everybody coming in and hanging out. Round of applause for Para for flying today and uh, sticking through the whole hour and 59 minutes. So, um, anyway... Uh, it will see you all tomorrow. Flying around Malta. No train sim world two stream tomorrow. We're just gonna do our flying and then we'll wrap it up for the day. So um, do join us for that. Hopefully you have some nice scenery. Just gonna cruise around and check things out and enjoy it and you know for about an hour or so and then we'll call it a day. Um yeah, that'll do. Um I was at the, this airfield going up. Oh, okay. Well, there, see, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good plan. If you know which airfield you're going to land at, you can just practice and take off and land, and you'll be fine. So um, do enjoy the rest of your Saturday morning, afternoon, evening, early Sunday on the Sunday for some folks, depending on where you are in the world. I have been and always shall be your host and pilot, Uncle B. Until then, peace, live long, and prosper.